All right, thank you so much for staying with Daybreak. Now, we're getting into this conversation. The old Wooten clan is here. We're talking about banking on circles, why they're the most lucrative as it stands right now, how they're going to deal with fraud. There's an entire fraud investigation unit that is supposed to be set up beginning next month. Let me introduce my guest real quick, beginning from my immediate left, Dr. George Ochiri, CEO, Arambe Sako. Thank you so much for making Pleasure. the time. Pleasure. Followed by Gloria Chebet, Chief Marketing Officer, Safaricom Investment Cooperative. Thank you so much for making time. And Luanga Mbeche, CEO, Kimisitu Sako. Pleasure. Thank you so much for making time as well. They'll all be making heads and tails of this conversation around banking on circles and why this is the venture that people are choosing right now. We'd like to hear from you as well. What has been your experience? What are the concerns you have around circles? 22422 is SMS line at Trevor Mbija at Zinzi underscore K. Faisal Ahmed is also with us here. He'll be taking us through the numbers. Faisal, what's your Twitter handle, by the way? It's at uh, Ahmed F. Faisal. I couldn't find you any see? other. You see? Any this other... is the reason why I wasn't picking that Twitter handle. <laughs> no, it's a whole paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> And guys, it's at who? We have Only the wise will understand. <laughs> we have guests. Right. Please behave. <laughs> Go ahead, Sir Faisal. Faisal has some numbers there to run through. Uh, thank you, Trevor. Just to take you through some of the numbers that have um, we have here for you, 1.2 trillion shillings. This is actually the size of the Sako Society in Kenya. The Sako Society was actually set up a long time ago when uh, even small uh, groups of women, uh, the ones we refer to as chamas, started setting up before they were officially formalized and uh, proper uh, cooperatives were actually set up. So it has actually grown to this from that small weekly, monthly contributions that uh, the ordinary Mamamboga was actually setting saving with. Now, last year alone, this was how, by how much uh, the SACO industry grew. In 2018, the savings with SACOs was at 690 billion shillings. 2019, it has actually jumped by 70 billion shillings to 760 billion shillings. Now, this alone shows you the potential that the SACO industry has had in Kenya when it comes to savings, but it will also get uh, much uh, deeper into the conversation of savings when we uh, engage our guests. But uh, going further down, we have 2,286 non-deposit taking SACOs who have 153.2 billion shillings saved up with them. That's actually an improvement from the previous years. And this is actually the number of SACOs both registered and unregistered with the SACO regulator SASRA, 7,300. And out of the 7,300 uh, SACOs, which uh, I had mentioned the number had uh, grown, um, 2,200 failed a test that was actually uh, conducted by the Ministry of Trade. This was actually to see if these fi uh, financial institutions were financially fit to take deposits and actually this shook the entire industry and could be the reason why the government um, has opted to set up an anti-fraud special unit to be looking into SACOs and particularly the whole uh, savings uh, um, area in uh, SACOs. Now the main issue and the first question I want to throw to our guests is the issue of uh, governance. Maybe um, I'll start with you, Dr. Ari. What is, what ails SACOs when it comes to governance? We've seen a lot of tug and pull when it comes to individuals actually trying to claim back their money. But uh, the SACO heads say that, no, we've invested your money in place A, B, C, D. So what ails SACOs when it comes to governance? Thank you very much. Um, a few societies invested in the wrong um, opportunities. So you find um, some invested in land, others invested in buildings. So their money is tied. So when a member is withdrawing and now they want to be refunded, the money is not there to effect the refund. I think we have examples you must have heard of like um, the, the Moore University, which has got a number of buildings, but does not have the cash flow to refund uh, the members. On the other hand also, we must admit, uh, yes, there have been governance issues in terms of uh, managing these institutions. A bit of the challenge comes from um, how we come to the board. We come to the board through popular election. Not all popular people have got the capability or skills to manage these institutions. So that is why we have such challenges. Yes. So you, uh, you mentioned that the investing in the wrong opportunities. What are the right investment opportunities? From where you start? The current regulatory framework yeah. is um, giving guidance on where circles should invest. 
and it stipulates that uh, 95% of uh, SACO's uh, mm -hmm. assets should be in the form of interest earning, basically loans to members. And this is one of the prudential ratios, mm -hmm. which SACO's, which are being regulated by SASRA, you must meet the test. Mm -hmm. So you find these societies which um, are being deregulated or are going down, they have invested more than 5% a non-interest earning asset, which is basically loans. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, we have Gloria. Gloria Chebet is a chief marketing officer at Safaricom Investment. Gloria, you've had 2,200 circles failed the accountability test that was done by the ministry. What is it that Kenyans should look for when they're shopping for a circle to join? Uh, track record of success mm -hmm. is really important when you're looking for a circle to join. Uh, it's important for you to know the kind of places that you want to invest your money. To be very honest, mm -hmm. uh, with the track record that we've seen, you know, uh, in most of these circles and the kind of things that they keep investing in, it's important to know who has had a history of success to know whether or not it's, you can be able to, to partner with them. In addition to that, it's also important to know that you can be able to pull or get money, you know, whenever you require. So, as the doctor, as Dactaria said, mm -hmm. uh, circles that involve, uh, invest most of their money in in real estate or in products other than uh, having money ready for members whenever they require for deposit taking and right. so forth is essential for you to know whether or not you can be able to partner with so them. just for clarification <coughs> for our audience it, it, i have a right to ask for a track record of a circle yes, yes. you do and all and the financials you for all when, you, when you get that record and all the financial records for all circles should be published and most of them do upload them on their websites please go through them understand understand how the you know history of success in those circles have been over the years mm -hmm. to know whether or not that is a sound mm -hmm. investment to, to partner with. Is there a need for innovations in the SACO area? Because now I'm talking about the most practical things. I know it's membership based, mm -hmm. but are we looking at a, a situation where a young person who's just from the university or maybe even from a college, but mm -hmm. the skills that they have are not necessarily, they don't have collateral. Say a DJ, for example, wants some loan. Mm -hmm. Because if they walk into a bank, they will not be given that loan. They're thinking this there's no collateral for that. And yet, these are the job opportunities that are available. Are we looking at innovative ways that can bring in the younger people who need this money and they can easily pay up, but they don't have a track record per se? I think, to be very honest, circles are meant for such people. I mean, banks will not give you access to facilities if you don't have collateral and so forth. Yeah. However, in circles, I can be able to, depending on my savings over the years, Dr. Terry, sure. you can be able to get access to loans, whether or not you have uh, any, anything in terms of, you know, to, to show you yeah. can be able to pay back the money. I will sign for you as a member. I will, he will sign for you as a member to ensure that in case you default in your, to pay your loan, we come through for you. But you needed but to have put in something. Yes, you need to have done your savings, you know, yeah. in case, uh, either way to be a member in a circle, you have to buy a certain number of shares yeah. and to have done a certain number of investments in terms of savings. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Ms. Mbeche, there's a, this concern. There's, there's a proposal to have the society's fraud investigation unit set up by next week. In the current system, how do circles deal with fraud? I think uh, first it's important to understand uh, the, mod the cooperative model in terms of how it uh, came into being. And there are two dimensions that uh, we are looking at when we are looking at cooperative model. We are looking at these are associate people, people who have come together and they have a common economic interest, mm -hmm. social interest, and also they have their aspirations. Then the other bit is that uh, for the circles, uh, you'll realize that uh, it's member controlled. Uh, you have your one vote. Irrespective of the number of shares that you actually have, you actually have your one vote. So now, uh, coming to uh, the bit of fraud, currently how the circles are actually doing it is one, you actually also have, must have a competent staff to actually be able to deal with the fraud cases. And you must also do your due diligence yeah. just to ensure that uh, the team or the people that you're actually employing are actually a people of integrity. Then again, uh, when you're dealing with fraud, you remember that uh, you're looking at people, and most of the time it's actually internal. It actually comes internally. Then again, it's also sometimes it's also important that you be able to train uh, your staff regularly on cybercrime and again on fraud. So that is actually very important. It's actually also very important to have systems in place where you can actually be able to track if, for example, you have a number of transactions, you actually be able to track the transactions that actually you are doing at a particular time. And yeah. you put such controls that it can actually be able to alert you 
in case uh, there's a transaction, unusual transaction. Yeah. So that is actually important. Again, again, we have in terms of fraud, we have also tackle, circles checking insurance mm -hmm. uh, to actually also to be able to, to curb fraud. So that's on the management side, yes. Yes. but on the personal side, if I'm a person, I'm part of a circle, I feel I'm being defrauded with <laughs> my own money, yeah. where do I go? So now, uh, if you look at the Circle Societies Act, uh, you will realize uh, that there was an amendment that actually the Circle officials, if there's a case of any loss of funds that results from the negligence of a Circle official, they are actually liable and can actually be sued yeah. to actually recover the money. Yeah. Uh, just to bring in uh, Gloria a bit on this one, what happens when circles actually misinvest? We've seen this with uh, a lot of the circles and also investment bankers themselves, and it's something that usually happens. So. What can circles do to maybe bounce back after they have had a misinvestment? Maybe they bought land that uh, they had overestimated its value and then it started depreciating or actually invested money in uh, stocks that had plummeted. So how do they recoup from this? To be very honest, if there's one thing uh, that is hard to come from is when you lose trust in your customers and in your you know, uh, members, to be very honest. It becomes really hard for you to operate because you find members don't no longer do their monthly you know, contributions or uh, those who've bought property from you no longer want to keep paying because they feel they're no longer, the investment is no longer safe. But uh, how the model of cooperatives and circles has been over the years, it's um, a boardroom discussion over well, let's invest in this product maybe a feasibility study will be done or not how detailed it is uh, it's up for question but uh, one thing that has been very clear over the years is the importance of using data in decision making mm -hmm. if you're not using proper data in understanding why we need to invest in this area or whether this market is good for you to invest in, in the first place or not mm -hmm. you end up losing money in places that end up being stuck we've seen circles like Malimu Sako with an entire, you know, huge investment in a place no one is intends to live. Right. So it takes a longer period of time to end up selling this project. So money is tied there. Mm -hmm. But you need this money for the front office and the deposit taking accounts for your clients. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very important and mandatory for circles to have systems in place that allows them to use data yeah. instead of an assumption in a boardroom that this is a good market in order to make decisions. Alright, so Dr. George, here's the thing, the Circle Society's Fraud Investigation Unit, that's the SSFIU, will start being operational next month. Um, experts, according to um, the Ministry of Treasury, will be coming in to help making sure that certain rules are put in place to take care of the rogue circles. Now here's the thing, um, some of the things that ail the circle industry is um, delaying of payment, um, reckless lending to mention a few. What are some of the new rules that you'd want to see being put into place um, to regulate circles really? Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you very much. Um, first we probably want to look at um, the quality of uh, people joining the leadership of, uh, of circles. Mm -hmm. um, we, we've had cases where uh, all members of a circle, for the, the board leadership, the board is uh, all are in one profession. So you don't have a mix of skills in the board. So everybody only knows one thing. So for example, if you talk of a lawyer circle, everybody is a lawyer. There is no accountant. If we can bring in a system, or rather we have a regulatory framework which allows for skill gap and skill mix in the board, yeah, that should bring quite some, uh, some difference. The other bit of it which is already coming through is uh, widening the scope of um, the existing regulator. Okay. Currently, the existing regulator only oversees the deposit-taking circles. While we have some very huge circles which are not deposit-taking, but they are not properly regulated. Situation worsened when we had devolution, mm -hmm. where now circles are treated as devolved units. Some counties do not have capacity to oversee what is happening. But also that brought in another more gap where you find somebody registers a circle in one county and operates in multiple counties. So we need to have a regulation or rather uh, a framework which takes care of uh, circles operating in more than uh, one county. And also capacity building among the regulators and overseers so that uh, there is indeed synchronized um, uh, oversight over circles. Mm -hmm. I, I want to go back to some question which uh, uh, was asked by your colleague. Mm -hmm the recourse for a member yeah. who has been defrauded. Um, a member who has been defrauded has got a number of opportunities. Those who are in circles regulated by SASRA, SASRA has a desk 
dealing with disputes between members and their societies. At county level, we have Directorate of Cooperative Societies. These directorates, <laughs> they also deal with disputes between members and cooperative societies. In the cooperative movement, we also have a court system, a tribunal. So there's a cooperative tribunal which goes around the country and also listens to disputes between members and the cooperative societies. But outside that, we have also somebody called Ombudsman. Office of the Ombudsman also addresses issues to deal with the mistreatment of members. There's a new authority also. It's called Kenya Competition Authority. A, a circle member is a customer. This authority deals with anybody who is deemed to be a customer. And if your right is infringed as a customer, then competition authority uh, comes in. Um, I've had interaction with them, and indeed, they do follow up. Uh, you may not believe it. There is also another one called Kenya Human Rights. When you have been defrauded, your rights have been abused. You have a right to go to Kenya Human Rights and lodge a complaint. Then they follow up the same. Thank you very much. Just to uh, bring <coughs> in again on this one, um, the circles are not all bad. Actually, they've helped the economy a lot. Comparing numbers from 2019, uh, 2018 and 2019, the savings have actually grown by 70 billion shillings. So there's something good that the circles are doing. What can be done to actually improve this? Because a lot has been said about uh, Kenya saving, uh, savings culture, but that is in mainstream banks. People are not saving, they're just opening banks for salaries accounts and all that. But what can be done to actually improve this number? Because there's a lot of potential out there when it comes to savings and actually circles are one of the streams that people can use to save, but what can be done to expand the scope? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, one area that circles have not done very well in is marketing. The potential of growth in the circle <coughs> subsector is huge because the model is very simple. You are a member, you are an investor, you are a customer. So it sinks very well. You put in your money, you'll also get something in return. But most societies you'll find they operate within a defined common bond mm -hmm. and they rarely bother to go outside the common bond to get more members and mobilize more products and services. I would watch for uh, marketing, mm -hmm. but also uh, in the recent past we've seen more uptake of technology. And when technology comes in, then the growth is uh, more accelerated. We tested uh, at Arambe uh, loans on mobile phone, where we were giving advance loans uh, of up to 250,000 on mobile phones, and the, that product just upsized. And by extension, in a circle, before you borrow, you must save. So the savings can actually go up <coughs> through technology and through marketing. Okay. The good thing is that we have a marketing expert sitting right here with us. Gloria, let me come to you. When you look um, from how it is that you relate with people who have saved under your circle, mm -hmm. um, is the savings, what is it that advises Kenyans to save with certain circles? Is it the dividends or just, an, just that knowing I have an extra cushion that I can fall back on? Is it the dividends that really guide Kenyans on which circles to invest in? Or just knowing, you know what, as long as I have something extra on the side as a cushion? Mm -hmm. uh, first, maybe just for clarity, I'm from a cooperative society, you know, just circle. So as a firecom investment, you don't really do deposit taking. But in response to your question, it's the comfort that I know I can wake up in the middle of the night, call uh, someone from the circle, says firecom circle, mm -hmm. and the loan will be processed the next day. And I'll have something that I didn't have the previous day to sort out a situation that I was I was I am in currently. I think the comfort of the ease of processing of money in circles is what most Kenyans rely circles for. Right. Maybe that's the reason why we have merry-go-round charmers and so forth because you do expect a certain amount of money at a certain period of time, so it's easy for you to make plans. Circles gives you that comfort of mind with the and with the growth that we've seen over the years as far as circles are concerned, and Kenya being a leading you know being leading in Africa as far as circles is concerned, mm -hmm. is really just because of the comfort it gives a common one entry. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Here's the thing. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Trevor. No, Betcha, there's a concern here. Last year, the SASRA sent out a circular saying that the regulator, existing regulatory frameworks governing the operations of DT circles is inadequate and leaves customers exposed to market abuse. Do you agree with that statement and what do you think should be done? Thank you, Trevor. Uh, I think... Uh, from where I sit, I think regulation is very important and it also gives the member the confidence mm -hmm. 
that uh, his or her money is actually safe. So as it stands, do you think it's inadequate? So as it stands, I think it's inadequate. And I think uh, more measures need to be put in place yeah. in terms of regulation. Uh, remember, I understand that uh, the next week uh, they are setting up anti-fraud, which yes. is actually also a good thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually they're setting up at Sasra. So that is actually a good thing. And uh, when you actually have the regulation, you bring about discipline in the sector. Mm -hmm. And when there's discipline in the sector, you actually sure that you actually going to grow. But then just to also add on uh, what Dr. Tari mentioned, uh, circles right now are automating, mm -hmm. and actually that is a very good, uh, that's a very good uh, uh, aspect. Yeah. And uh, for us to be able to actually bring young people on board, uh, because these are the people who will actually want to do the attractions or wherever they are. Mm -hmm. So I think circles are realized that and mm -hmm. the circles are actually doing uh, that, that bit or to me fintech. Yeah. They have actually brought in fintechs. You can save through your phone. You can borrow through your phone. And just as he said, at Kimisitu, we also introduced the mobile, a mobile product. Mm -hmm. And we didn't believe how much we were giving each day. So we realized that is, and again, the loan product normally, uh, the rates are not similar to the regular products we actually give. So mm -hmm. you realize also you're able to make, mm -hmm. actually able to make money. All right, here's the thing, Bache. If you saw the numbers that Faisal shared with us earlier, the latest data from Treasury is showing how um, the numbers have gone up from about 760 billion compared to 690 billion the previous year, um, which has sort of raised the profile of circles in the financial sector. Then I'm curious to know, and even from where you're standing, what is the future of banking in Kenya? You look at banks, the interest rate is still a conversation that is on and off. Getting a loan from a bank is quite um, tiresome. So with banks playing hard to get and circles winning the hearts of Kenyans, what is the future of banking in Kenya? What I'll actually look at, I'll actually talk about uh, more on circles. And uh, what I'll point out is actually simplicity in borrowing from circles. It's actually a very simple process when you compare it to the bank. You'll realize that, again, you use your savings to actually be able to act, act work as a collateral for you to be able to actually borrow. And from the same savings, again, you're earning interest at the end of the year. And then if you look also in terms of circles, if you look at the highest ever paid dividends in, in, in companies or in the sector, circles pays the highest dividend in the sector. So I think in terms of the numbers, uh, I'm actually thinking that uh, moving forward even for the circles, a circle need to have a full ministry, uh, given the numbers that we actually see. <laughs> and uh, the, just the other year, were the national savings were 33%. That was actually accumulated by the circles. So I think this is a sector that really need to be given a lot of uh, the, you know, attention and uh, also be supported to actually get to, to get to its full potential. I think uh, uh, for the bank, uh, I would actually say the future is in the circles. Yes. Okay, Dr. George, you already want to jump into Yes, that? I would. Uh, I want to add a voice on the same. First, there will be banks, mm -hmm. um, but there will be fewer uh, because even right now, uh, an economy of 10 trillion, we cannot sustain 42 banks. Uh, that is too much for this small economy. So the banks will reduce in number. Um, there will be also, circles will eat into their market size, but they will also carnival one another. So we'll have fewer banks, but even circles the same. We have got too many circles, a number of them actually not economically viable. So I'm, I'm imagining, and also going by the question from your colleague on uh, strengthening the regulatory framework, uh, one of the areas is probably to look at the viability of some of the circles we have around. Uh, the current regulatory framework makes it a little bit open. Any 10 people can come together and then they form a circle. Allow me also to add a voice on the question about uh, the weakness of the current regulatory uh, framework. SASRA is supposed to operate like Central Bank of Kenya. Central Bank supervises commercial banks or banks in the Republic of Kenya. And Central Bank has got teeth. He'll step in and take action if he deems it fit on any bank. Currently, the regulatory framework allows SASRA to do inspections and then liaise with the commissioner of cooperatives. That is too lengthy. So one of the expectations from my desk SASRA will be given more powers that if they do any investigation and they deem fit to take action, they don't have to refer, refer to another arm of the government. Straight away, they take action. And this, of course, uh, will also bring in a sense of discipline in the leadership.
in terms of secretariat, in terms of board. Yeah. Yes. So then what's the need of having the Society's Fraud Investigation Unit? Because now this will work with SASRA, DCI, Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, as I see here. It, doesn't that just make it a whole quagmire that is even harder to navigate? Thank you very much. Um, I'm privileged to, to lead a circle which has had actually fraud, yes. a number of fraud transactions. And currently, the system is that uh, we refer to the banking fraud unit. Mm -hmm. They are the ones we refer circle matters to. Now, the banking fraud unit, first of all, they have enough. Yeah. Because we're talking <coughs> about two banks and having fraud uh, almost every day. But there is the uniqueness of the circle, as my colleague here already mentioned, where it is easier to hide a fraud in a circle system than in a bank. And I think like we already observed earlier, the governance structure in circles is much weaker. So we need uh, a unit that understands the industry much better than the conventional banking fraud unit that we have. Yeah. That is why uh, we are agitating and we are very happy we, the government has listened to this, mm. that we are now going to have uh, a fraud unit uh, for circles. Okay. Um, just to bring in uh, Gloria a bit on this one, is there credit uh, information sharing in uh, cooperative societies and circles? Because this is very important in knowing that this person is in circle A and also wants, um, is in probably one or two circles and also has credit on uh, one and uh, wants to borrow from the other. So is there credit information sharing between circles themselves like there is in banks and what happens if someone defaults? I think the data is available, but as far as sharing is concerned, it, uh, there are a couple of loopholes there. That is why you'd find I can be in three, four, five, six circles and I have loans in each of these circles. I mean, once I'm a member in a certain circle, the fact that I'm even asking or borrowing a loan, that is business for the circle. So the reason as to why there's, I'm actually happy about you know the fraud center coming up is because it will now ensure such, such things <coughs> are put up to measure and standards that will ensure that that such information is shared across the platforms. It's been very clear lately, anytime someone defaults, you're being told, oh, you'll be listed and so forth and so forth, but in circles that hasn't been quite clear. And my uh, reason, my thoughts are as to why that is clear in banking sector and not in circles is because of the digital disruption that happens in the banking sectors in comparison to the circles. Circles are slow to adoption of technology, they are yeah. slow to adoption or even change in the first place. So if you're not able to make up change or adopt technology, how are you able to share such data mm -hmm. at ease? So if all my information is an analog system somewhere here, how can I share with this circle so that I can be able to compare data so as long as we don't do you know digital disruptions in circles <coughs> banking sector will do, be doing better in yeah. comparison to the circles so, so Mbeche, it's a very thin line actually because there's the, the sharing of information and the role of technology if your style is digital and they are more analog how do you share with them like chebet is raising there but then there's also the issue of the right to privacy should there be some level of regulation that i don't necessarily want my relationship with you to necessarily translate to his data. I mean, I don't want him to see what we are dealing around. I, I think, uh, thank you, if you look at the circles, uh, mostly in terms of data sharing, it normally comes at the point where you are applying for a loan. Mm -hmm. At the point where you are applying for a loan and also at the point where you are actually coming in as a member, the KYC, where you have to actually have to know your, your customer. So through that, you'll actually get to try to build more information around the customer right from the time he or she's getting in yeah. to the point because the circles normally take a period before you're able to get your loan. Yeah. The circle will take three to six months, but for the fintech products it will be immediate. But during that time they're actually taking, then you know you actually have to build information around your client. And again, in terms of uh, the information that you're actually getting, they need to actually sign just to let you, to allow you to be able to access their data, whatever they are, because that will actually allow you to serve him or her. But, but you terms, accessing my data, as you see, doesn't necessarily mean I've allowed you to share it with Harambe Sako, for example. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I agree with that. I agree with that. Uh, but we realize that uh, uh, when you go, for example, to the credit bureaus, <coughs> yeah. and you actually pull in, if uh, if Harambe is actually registered uh, with the with the credit bureau, and you're actually able to pull in data, I'll actually find your data if you are with Harambe Sako. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the data is there. Isn't that where the concern is? That's where my main concern is. So because, because I'm giving right you, because well. actually because you realize the circles are giving multipliers and because yeah. I'm actually giving you part of the member's money, I'm actually have, have the duty to actually safeguard the money. So before I lend it out, I actually make sure the person I'm lending it out to is actually able to actually pay back the money. Mm. Yeah. 
But you are saying that um, the future is SACO. Yes. What is the future of SACOs? Now, uh, as I look at the SACOs, uh, in terms of uh, the governance level is actually uh, going high. Uh, young people are actually coming in, even in terms of the board. I have an average board of, I think, 40 years. Uh, and then again, they're actually coming with new ideas. They're actually, you know, embracing technology. So uh, I'm actually looking at a point whereby, uh, with also with the good regulations, uh, most those many small circles could actually merge and actually come up as one a bigger entity so that we don't have very small circles. You will realize that you'll get to a town, and in the same building you have three circles. So you wonder what is the business, uh, you know, uh, behind behind this. So I think the circles, when they are clearly regulated and actually clearly guided, then I think uh, the, the circles are taking over. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I think why, uh, Zinzi, I don't know if you've picked on this, but why Trevor has been insisting on privacy a lot. Uh -huh. Maybe he doesn't want his credits to be known. Because it could be. State. Yeah, <laughs> same discussion we had last week. But, uh, Dr. Lee, just uh, to bring <laughs> you in before uh, we go and break, what happens to guarantors? Because this has been also something that a lot of people have been complaining about. I assure someone, uh, or, or rather I be their guarantor when they're taking this loan with this circle, and what happens to me if they actually default? So first, the concept of guaranteeing in circles is a very noble idea. It makes it very easy for a circle member to access credit facility. And it has worked very well when we compare the Kenyan model with the rest of Africa and the rest of the world. The circles here have grown very fast because of this model, where it is so easy, your colleagues, they give you a guarantee and you access a loan. The painful part comes where now a loanee uh, or a borrower uh, fails to repay their loan. The regulatory framework currently allows the primary circle or the circle that lent out to pursue the loanee, but the last fallback is the guarantor. And indeed we've done that and it's very painful, even bringing fear now amongst members. We already have societies facing challenges where now uh, members do not want to sign for colleagues because they have suffered before. And uh, have you thought of maybe bringing in insurance because banks have done that a lot? Bringing in insurance to maybe safeguard themselves? It's very difficult to cover loan, uh, an insurance cover for loan default. Very, very rare. So how would you, how, what, what is the solution to that? Because I don't want to give Trevor my money. I don't want to be his... <laughs> Neither do I. Neither yes. does Faisal. But we still Guy. want to borrow in circles. <laughs> but you see, that aspect of where your colleagues or your friends uh, become your guarantor seems to be a challenge. What's the way around it? What's the solution? There is opportunity. In the Republic of Rwanda, they have moved ahead of us, though they are much younger than our nation. While there is the concept of uh, guaranteeing, they are getting stronger in collateral lending. Where collateral lending is, and I will ask you to bring your title deed or your logbook. Now, what happens in Rwanda that we don't have here in Kenya? There's an authority where we lodge these collaterals. If you don't honor your obligation as a borrower, I as a lender, I only report to the authority. The authority then coordinates the collection process. In Kenya, the lender is left on his own, and then we end up now going to the guarantors. So actually now going to the regulatory framework, probably that should be one of them, where we have an authority that coordinates uh, collaterals that are attached to uh, loans. All right. Let's see some of your feedback coming through on 22422. That's our SMS line at Trevor Mbija at Zinzi underscore K at Citizen TV Kenya. Pfizer would say his Twitter handle. That's a whole paragraph. <laughs> Let's see what we're saying here. Mutembe Wankwone from Meru says banking on SACO is the best option. Currently, you get loans four times your savings and dividends annually, depending on the profits made. Ask why the Arambe Sako are paying very low dividends of 6.5% compared to other smaller circles who are paying more, up to even 20%. All right. Is Arambe Sako fail, falling? I'm a concerned member. So just answer Mutembe directly before we go to the next one. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mutembe. Um, first, a Sako, like Arambe, we lend at 12% per month. That is 1% reduce, sorry, 12% per year. That is 1% reducing. Our real effective rate of interest is actually 6.7%. So even going from that alone, 
it is almost impossible to pay a dividend of 20%. And I need to uh, warn that member not to be hoodwinked. We've had cases where circles pop up, they pay very good dividend for three or so years, they attract members even from other circles, then in no time they have no liquidity management system in place. I don't want to mention one, but there is one in town today where you cannot even access uh, 20,000 shillings after hoodwinking. But uh, on the dividend con comparison with circles of our size, um, we were falling behind in some of the prudential ratios. So we are in agreement with the regulator that for a period of time, we are going to be putting aside more of our profits to reserves so that, like the prudential ratios require, we meet the compliance requirements. And this we have explained to the members that as much as we need to be popular, we pay a high dividend, it is also important to be compliant. Yeah. Right. And if you also look at our size, to meet those requirements is not as easy as the small societies. For example, there is one called uh, uh, core capital um, ratio. You need to have 8% of your total assets. So when you talk of Arambe, you're talking of 10, sorry, 8% of 29 billion shillings. And that should be from reserves alone. That is huge because that one you're talking about almost 1.8 billion shillings. But this is something we're going to overcome because in the arrangement we have, we expect come the end of 2020, we should be fully compliant with all the ratios. He's also wondering whether Arambe Sako is falling. No, no, no. <laughs> Arambe is too solid to fall. In fact, if you talk of societies that you can count on, yeah. you should start with Arambe because okay. you can physically see it. All right. And if you go to any major count, town in Kenya, yeah. Arambe is present. Okay. Let's see another concern coming through if there are any feedback to 22422 and that's SMS line. You can reach us on Comen from Eldoret says Recently, Safaricom Investment did a test run of a product known as Mali. On it, mobile phone platform that what and okay. What on it, mobile phone platform, what became of it? Circles <coughs> thrive on trust. Many Kenyans have lost savings to circle leaders who collude with regulators to conceal leakages. Chebet? Uh, I don't think that is our product. Uh, Mali is not a Safaricom product? Yes, it's not a Safaricom investment product. It uh -huh. could be a Safaricom circle product. And I probably would love to get back to that person with the details about that uh, issue. Uh -huh. And. That was, that's a much I can say but about But for it. clarification, Mali is not one of your products. It's not one of Safaricom it investment products. It could be Safaricom Sarko's yeah. product. Okay. okay. Yes. All right. All right. Let's see what else you're saying online as well on 22422 and also using the hashtag Daybreak. That's what we're waiting for to bring up. Um, uh, is there a quick, uh, that is from Sir Nixon from Kindaruma. He says that, is there a quick way to verify um, or see if there's a true or genuine circle? Like there's a way to verify a valid driver's license mm -hmm. through a short code. That's is there a way to question. actually see that, Mr. Mbecha? Yeah, I think uh, the circles are actually regulated. And uh, as we mentioned as we started this conversation, was that the circles are audited every year and it's a requirement. And the circles, the accounts are actually there uh, for anyone who actually want to join to actually really look at them. And these are done by qualified auditors. They're actually going through those accounts. Yeah. So for you to make verification and actually say this is the right circle that I want to get into, mm -hmm. through looking at the financial, you can actually be able to tell. You can actually be able to do your ratios. You can actually be able to tell whether this is a liquid circle. Mm -hmm. You can actually be able to tell this is a circle that you can get your loan in one hour or less. But so, that's only, so what, what amounts should I be looking at if I'm not Mutia Mazimatic? Yes, you are. So if I'm not a, a mathematician, <laughs> I see the papers then. <laughs> we call it Mutia Mathematic. <laughs> so we have a lot of things there. The, you see, you have yeah, the think, data. What yeah. am I looking at? The yes. final balance, the closing <laughs> balance, what, and how much should it be for me to know this is a solid sum? But also, Mbeche, just to add us on what Trevor is saying, from what the odd, um, our viewer is asking, there's yes. no short code, there's yeah. no dial star, this, this, this. Just to verify. And verify it on the spot. Mm -hmm. I think if you have, if you if you look at the website, uh, you'll actually, if you look at the ministry website, you'll actually see a list of actually circles. And because all the circles, remember the circles that are not deposit taking currently are still regulated by the commission, the, by the commission, the commission of, of corporate development, and of course for the, dep the deposit taking actually by SASRA. So this is information that you can actually find if you actually want to see. And then again, uh, what members also do is that uh, you know uh, because uh, it's it's like. Uh, you want to understand because realize that you are an organization whereby you are having your membership 
Are you having a membership for that particular em that's employee organization? Mm -hmm. So you can actually be able to tell the kind of service that these members are actually getting from the circle. If at all you are not mathematical, mm -hmm. but if you are mathematical, you can actually look <coughs> at the ratios. You can actually be able to tell whether the circle is actually be able to pay its obligations. What, for example, what is the liquidity ratio? It is able to actually pay off the loans that they actually have, or is it struggling? Uh, it, uh, for example, are there queues when uh, their loans are on loan applications? Are there so? What is the level of customer experience? So that you can actually get. Mm -hmm. yes. is there so referrals is actually also very important for the members. Actually, before they join circles, they actually go for referrals. Right. They just to find out how the service is, the experience that uh, these other members actually have mm -hmm. in terms of, yeah, so the service delivery is actually, is actually key and is something that is out there that you can actually get through referrals. All right, yeah. Gloria, I'll let you have the last say. I think to be very honest, this is one of the things I would expect to see the anti-fraud unit set up to do, uh, to provide a platform for members or for both for the public to be able to access such information on the mobile phone or you know or via dial or something like that. However, currently, before this system is put in place, uh, you can be able to use data on your near performance. If this year we did well, the next year we're also growing and so forth and so forth. Or when there was a, there was a dip and then you're able to pick up, such information can be able to help you make a decision on whether or not that is a good circle to join. And the good thing about today is social media is very vibrant mm -hmm. and the digital world is very, has a lot of information about every each and this circles available. There's data about how badly Safaricom investment probably did last year or how well they're doing in something else you can be able to use such information to gauge for now mm -hmm. but as moving forward i this is one of the things i remember there's a question you asked what you'd want to see the anti-fraud unit doing is put in place systems that members can be able to easily access such information Okay, Dr. George, your closing statement, and perhaps even as you make your closing statement, assurance. What assurance do circles give the investors? Because he, as much as I'm saving with you, you're taking my money and putting it into an asset, a land, a certain investment, but anything can go wrong in that investment. What assurance do I have that my money, my principal amount is still intact, as you also give your closing comment? Thank you very much. Um, already the assurance is there from the, the regulator. Uh, if you had a <coughs> question about compliance, now the deposit taking circles uh, the regulator demands it's not uh, uh, negotiating demands that we put up to 95 percent of circles money mm -hmm. in loans to members and for the regulator to approve for example your accounts or to give you a license then you must be near compliance or fully compliant so the assurance is there with the regulator my last remarks i think is slightly uh, outside this, but still within, we are very excited with the government's inclusion of circles in the big four agenda, particularly the housing agenda, where 11 circles have been nominated on pilot basis to work together with Kenya Mortgage Refinancing Company. And we want to see whether we can make long term financing, now going beyond 15 years, yeah. to our members to do uh, houses. Uh, Rambe Circle is one of them. And of course, I would want to urge the members to save more in readiness for this. All right. Dr. Jojo Chiri, CEO, Arambe Sako, Gloria Chebet, Chief Marketing Officer, Safaricom Investment Cooperative, and Luanga Mbeche, CEO, Kimisitu Sako. Thank you so much for making time for us this morning. This has been the conversations around circles and why you're banking on them. And thank you so much for the questions that have come through to our studios. Now we're going to move on to a different conversation in just a bit right after the break. Faisal Ahmed has a bit of concern in regards to the coronavirus. Yes, Faisal?